Hey, what's up? This is Hunter Nelson, and today we're going to be talking about some of the essential deployment environments for your WordPress marketing website. And without further ado, let's pop over to the screen capture. So this is a blog commentary video. Um, got the blog post linked in the comments uh, on YouTube. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about those kind of essential deployment environments. Um, for a public facing WordPress marketing website for a business. So if you have kind of a hobby site or something that there's no money on the line, there's no you know, big importance if there's a huge issue and it goes down for a period of time because you have a small audience um, or, or it otherwise just isn't critical, then this video might not apply to you. But if you're running a business with um, you know, revenue to protect, uh, a brand to maintain, um, you know, things like that, then you definitely need to have a progressive publishing environment um, set up. And what that means is uh, changes to your website are going to progress through a series of um, environments uh, or places where your website is hosted uh, with kind of certain increasing levels of importance. Um, for your website uh, and that's usually going to start at the very bottom with a developer environment so a developer making changes on their machine to the code to the look and feel etc uh, etc et um, and then progressing all the way up through various uh, divisions of um, uh, environments all the way into a production environment which is going to be the public facing live version of your website um, and uh, just kind of coming through the post here, um, one of the first things we kind of talked about is, you know, how WordPress compares to um, a mature software application. Um, I think it's kind of important to understand um, what this looks like um, before we talk about kind of what a typical WordPress site might look like. Um, you know, so like a mature software application with hundreds of millions of revenue like you know salesforce.com or something like that is going to have um, many stakeholders involved with the development modification and maintenance of a website so they're going to have developers they're going to have an internal product team that kind of shapes the direction of how the site is built um, from a product perspective with uh, based off customer feedback internal priorities things like that um, there are going to be analysts, there's going to be quality assurance testers, um, project managers, there's going to be project sponsors and executive champions with the organization. Obviously the clients uh, of or purchasers of the end product are going to have a um, you know, big stake within it. And then there's also the kind of end users of the product. Um, so you know, that's a lot of different people, a lot of different um, you know, stakeholders involved in the production, a lot of different ways that an application be, can be um, compromised from a security spec perspective. You know, each one of those people involved within it represents like a phishing risk um, to give away their passwords, uh, things like that. So, you know, a lot of the ways kind of these progressive publishing environments uh, evolve in an enterprise software application are used to control, um, you know, cybersecurity defense, um, making changes in a controlled manner that doesn't um, upset kind of higher level stakeholders, and um, you know that's kind of how those things evolve. Um, okay, yeah. So we'll go through these environments real quick, um, and starting with kind of where a change or set of changes would actually start and that's going to be on like the local developer machine so this is an instance of the application or the website um, whatever it is uh, that's contained on a single PC of a developer um, and that's usually going to have test data within it it's going to have um, just the hardware that's available to the local uh, developers machine and that's really going to be where kind of things are able to be broken and then um, blown away and restarted if there's like a, a critical issue and um, all the things that could go wrong are contained within that local developer machine. 
once kind of um, developers are ready to commit uh, their changes, uh, a team of developers is typically going to publish that to an environment that's a devel developer staging environment. And that's like a, a shared environment on a server that developers um, can test changes with production-like data and um, you know can break stuff and it's a lot of the times these environments do have some issues on them but um, you know they're they're good enough that developers can kind of help move a semi-finished release to a ready for review type stage um, and once once the kind of release of changes is kind of in that next next step that will be pushed to a staging environment and that's where like internal team members like quality assurance analysts, business analysts, um, team leads, um, kind of the non-technical, non-developer, but still internal to the, the team that's involved in the release is gonna go and start reviewing these changes and making sure that they're um, what the client asked for and kind of identifying some of the business level concerns um, with those changes and uh, making sure that they're good before they're shown to the client. Um, once the internal team kind of signs off on those and thinks everything's ready to go, um, the changes are usually going to be sent up to a user acceptance, user acceptance testing environment or a UAT environment and that's usually going to have um, recent production data or um, you know, very, very something that the client would be very familiar with. Um, a lot of times, developers and internal stakeholders won't even have access to this, so it's only you know clients that are going to have access to it, um, so they can do their testing. Um, and you know, this is kind of like a, a more polished version of the release, and it's meant for the clients to kind of provide sign off on at this point. Um, after that it's going to go to like an integration testing environment um, and these all these environments below UAT staging dev staging dev and whatever other sort of delineations are typically going to have like non-production hardware so production environments are typically going to have high-end hardware they might have sophisticated caching they might have very large database um, sizes and things like that so um, when you an integration testing environment is really just to make sure that um, the application is still going to meet performance benchmarks and um, is going to be tested to make sure that the changes on it are um, sufficient to go into a production environment. Um, so that's really the kind of purpose of that. Um, and then once those tests pass, they're going to go to a production environment. Um, and integration testing environments are usually going to have like a Clients aren't going to have access to it. Internal um, test internal teams aren't going to have access to it. Developers aren't going to have access to it. Um, usually, like you know, site reliability engineers or or like specialized testers um, that are have more hardware expertise are going to be the ones that have access to this. And then production is usually going to be very tightly controlled to end users, a limited set of support personnel, or um, temporary access granted um, to like high high end developer um, people that need to troubleshoot um, high priority issues or things like that. Um, so that's kind of like a good um, you know helps you understand like what's going on in a more sophisticated um, environment. And you know this is something that WordPress websites do grow into uh, occasionally. So, but a lot of this isn't needed for smaller, under $10 million um, uh, re annual revenue type businesses, um, but they definitely need to have something more sophisticated than just a single production instance that can be as vulnerable to getting hacked or making a breaking change that brings everything offline for a period of time and just all sorts of other issues. You need to have your production instance be a protected stable environment um, so you know kind of condensing down that into a small team of maybe marketers um, or maybe one web developer or something like that which is kind of a common setup for a WordPress uh, environment um, 
you can bring that down to really these three essential environments. And that's going to be your developer's environment, your staging environment, and your production environment. So your developer environment is still going to be that contained on a single PC machine. Um, and this is going to be very similar to what we saw um, in like the more mature applications environments. It's still going to have you know, one person where they can blow away the website and pull down the latest version and um, kind of start over if there's a critical issue um, you know, on their machine and prevent that from boiling up into staging or production. Once the developers think that they've got a um, you know, good enough set of changes um, to uh, push the next version, that will go to staging. Um, and staging is a good place for internal members of the team that are not developers to um, collaborate on things like content edits and non-code related um, changes in WordPress. You know, because like in WordPress, a lot of the changes that are going to be done are going to be edits to um, text on web pages, uploading new images, publishing blog posts, creating new landing pages, um, things like that. So, you know, a lot of times there's not even uh, a developer involved in most changes, but those changes do need to make, be um, produced on a staging environment. Um, that way you're not publishing the wrong URL and then having to set like a set up like a redirect or something on your production instance for SEO purposes. Um, you can upload the wrong image and then not have to worry about that getting indexed. Um, you can kind of collaborate on changes um, without them being public, you know, because the staging environments usually going to be password protected, private, so you're not um, having ch changes viewed publicly um, by people on your website so that, you know, if there's styling issues with CSS or something like that, it's not a bad look presented on your end website. Um, so staging is a, you know, definitely this is one that's like missed a lot is there's, there's no staging site. So, um, definitely want to incorporate a staging site into your publishing workflow for, uh, business marketing, like public facing word, WordPress websites. And then your production instance is, um, also, you know, your public facing one. And you want to make sure that you've got regular backups configured, caching is configured properly, um, and that there's all the kind of goodies that you need to have like a higher performing from a speed perspective and um, load time perspective um, website. And that's um, protected from hackers and is able to be restored to a previous version if there is an issue. Um, so, um, you know, that's a, uh, kind of good overview of those environments. Um, again, if you want some more details, check out the post with the link down in the comments on YouTube or the description on YouTube there. Um, and if you need help kind of getting this environment set up, we do host WordPress websites here at Tortoise and Hare Software. You can uh, get your, your website kind of migrated over to our hosting and get you set up with this like progressive publishing um, environments um, and kind of help improve your workflow for your WordPress website. So reach out if you need any help. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, let us know in the comments below here on YouTube and we'll be happy to answer anything for you. Um, and if you're watching this video on YouTube, definitely subscribe. We're publishing regular content here and um, thanks for watching and until next time.